Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. This is basically part two or a continuation of uh, my vacuum pump story. In this video I'm going to be completely tearing down a vacuum pump and rebuilding it. This pump is a two-stage vacuum pump. If you have a single stage it just means that there will be a few less pieces than what I have in mind. But this will be a pretty good guide for anyone who wants to tear their pump apart and put it back together. Or if you've purchased a pump, this is probably a good idea if you're handy at all. Tear the pump apart and clean it out so that you don't have issues. Because as you will see coming up, this pump had a few issues as well as a lot of junk inside of it. I wanted to warn my regular viewers that there will not be any jet ski content in this video. This video is basically aimed at those who are thinking about buying a vacuum pump or who have bought a vacuum pump and have some questions about it. As a complete noob to vacuum pumps myself, I had a lot of questions that I couldn't find the answers to and so I dove into this pump. I did some research, I took some measurements and I did a bunch of research and answered some of my own questions which will be answered in this video. For my jet ski fans, I'm going to do an unboxing video that will come out after these two vacuum pump videos, so after this one I guess. And uh, if it comes out on Sunday, then it's going to be my Sunday video. I'm going to be camping this weekend, so I won't be able to actually post and comment on my videos like I normally do. So I might keep uh, the unboxing video for Sunday. I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, for carbon fiber work and fiberglass work, there's a box there and a box there. I've been struggling with this vacuum pump, working really hard at my day job and trying to get videos together, so I've been completely wore out and I actually need a weekend away where I'm away from stuff and I can't be out in the garage until 3 o'clock in the morning or 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning working on stuff. I posted a disclaimer at the first of this video and I will say it again here. Make sure you watch all the way through this video before you go and work on your pump yourself or tear it apart yourself because there are a couple of things that I learned along the way that I kind of wanted to put in order so that you guys could see the troubles that I ran into. I could have very easily just edited that out of the video and made it seem like this job was very easy for me. But uh, I'm a small engine mechanic and uh, I made a couple of mistakes or errors and I point them out in this video so you guys don't have to make those same mistakes. Let's get into it. I've decided that I'm going to pull this pump completely apart and inspect inside of it before ever turning it on because if there is a little bit of rust in there I would rather deal with it now than have it surprise me six months from now by basically not pulling a vacuum. So. Uh, I would recommend if you're fairly handy, this is not a big job, especially I, I'll film the whole thing and show you guys any of the uh, critical steps. Uh, there's not a lot that's going to surprise you in there, so definitely not a big deal to take one of these apart and put it back together without any issue. If you're afraid of doing it, then uh, don't do it. Being nervous is probably what's going to get you in trouble, but uh, I'll show you guys how simple these really are. So let's just get into it. I'm going to start off by putting this up on end so that the oil runs down into this part of the case and that way it'll be a little bit less messy to work on. Guaranteed that it's going to make a little bit of mess anyway but uh, yeah that's why I have it on this piece of cardboard and also to stop contamination from getting into the pump. So you want to work in a fairly clean area so that you don't contaminate your pump pieces. All right, this piece here just threads off by hand. There's an O-ring around the bottom of it. This is uh, kind of like an air filter, but what it is designed to do is to trap the oil vapors on their way out. So this is kind of like a PCV valve on a car. So you have the air venting out through this area and there's oil vapors that uh, come out with the pumped air or the vacuumed air. And so they don't want that just escaping for two reasons. One, it would go into the air and get on stuff. And two, it would make the oil level drop quite quickly if you just allowed the vapors to come out through there. So I believe this is a four millimeter Allen key through here. It sure is. And I think I can actually leave the base of this on. 
So we'll try it that way. Even if you're not comfortable taking your pump apart, I would highly recommend at the very least removing this cover and turning it over by hand to see if it feels crunchy at all. The model of this particular pump is 2RS-3 and I think it's probably sold by a whole bunch of different uh, companies both on Amazon and eBay. All right. Let that drip just a little bit and then move this to the side. Oh yeah, I'm glad I took it apart. Look all the stuff in there. I'm not sure if the camera will be able to pick that up. I'll wipe it with a rag. I think this is probably just manufacture. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> so I would highly recommend taking your pump apart and cleaning it out before using it. That is nasty. Fortunately, the pump, if you compare this to the other one, this is quite clean and not rusty. So I think there's casting material or machining material that is on the pump. But other than that, I don't see any rust as of now. So that is very good news. Let's continue pulling it apart. The rest I think is five millimeters and Phillips screws. Probably a good idea to remove this part of the pump. I think this is actually an oil pump. Uh, so good idea to pull these screws out before you go any further. You don't need to take this off to take it apart, but you almost need to take this off to put it back together. So you may as well do it now while you have the cover attached to the pump itself and you're able to turn these screws out. The screws are quite tight. So uh, let's see, the H is at the top that says HBS. And so, yeah, this is, this looks like an oil pump. Yes, it is. The oil pump pickup is in the bottom here. And this little plastic piece here turns around, spins around. And as I'm telling you guys this, I do see a little bit of corrosion on here. So I'm glad I took it apart. <laughs> so this little thing spins around and it pushes oil out. Uh, this must be to feed something on a different machine or to test the pressure. I hear my cat, I will be right back. And now we will continue taking apart the pump. I think I was just saying that uh, yeah, the oil goes in here. I think this is either a test port or a feed for something else that is not used on this particular unit. There are three long bolts that go through. These are the valves. These are one-way reed valves that allow the pressure to go out but not back in. So basically, this is kind of like the reed valve in a two-cycle engine or anything else, I guess. It's a reed valve. So what happens here is the pressure goes in through here. You can see there's a tunnel down there. Goes into the first vein and the first vein has two valves on it that allow it out. And then the uh, second vein or second vein pump pulls air from the first one and puts it out through here. So I'm actually going to take these off to make sure there's no corrosion on the back side of them. Um, probably not needed, but I'm going to clean all these parts individually anyway. So it looks like the two for the other pump are smaller. So you want to keep that in mind if you take yours apart. It looks like these two, oh no, okay. The, the, this piece is, yeah, okay. They're not smaller. They're all the same size. On mine there, anyway. Alright, so all the reed valves have been removed. Now I will continue removing the outer cover. I'm going to make up names for these parts because I'm not a 
vacuum pump technician. I don't know exactly what to call them. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to call them what they look like. These bolts are fairly long. I think they go through all the way into this body. And then underneath this, we'll have some shorter screws that go just through into the plate adjacent to them. Pull these bolts out. Set them aside. This cover pulls off and it is going to pull the other rotor with it. Now, the only thing you need to be careful about here is that there are little springs in these veins. Little like pen looking springs. Uh, yeah, they're not going to go flying very likely, but a good idea to uh, take care that you don't lose them. So here is the secondary rotor or secondary vein rotor. I don't know what this is called, but you can see there is some schmoo on that. There is dirt on that area. So I'm again, I'm very glad that I did not run this pump. I'm going to clean all this stuff very thoroughly before I put it back together. <clears throat> I'm going to stop talking a little bit for two reasons. One, my tonsils are kind of sore, my throat's sore. And two, uh, it makes it really hard to edit the video when I talk too much. <laughs> Alright, so this is the rotor housing for the secondary. You can see this is where the uh, reed valve goes on the top and this is where it pulls air in from the other pump. So the primary pump is here and it pumps air. The the primary pump is here and the secondary pump pulls air through this port here into this chamber and then pushes it out through the top which is through the reed valve. It's very important that the reed valves seal because if they don't your vacuum pressure will just leak back through as the vein moves away. Did I already remove one of these? I don't remember removing that screw. That's not good. Okay, so now this is the outer cover for the primary pump. There we can see the primary rotor and vane. The very good news that that moves freely because on the other pump it did not. There is no rust on this inner part, which is good news. I could pull this rotor out right now, but what I'm actually going to do instead is just take the body off because it'll make it a lot easier. So two more bolts here. These are going to be a little bit longer because they go through a lot bigger of a casting. The vein is popping out along with the springs, so we'll very carefully set that aside. And now, check this, there's a tiny spot of rust there, but nothing on any of the rotating surfaces. The grind on this is very nice, they do a very nice job with that, but when they're putting it together they forgot a bolt. All right, remove the rotor. No rust on the back side of the rotor, so I'm very happy about that. This is the part where the other pump had a lot of rust. I'm really glad that I went through the trouble of taking this apart and checking it. I'm going to go one step further and actually take this part completely off. And that way, I'll be able to clean everything individually, piece by piece. So here we have it. We have some O-rings to stop any air from pulling through the motor. And we have a reed valve where the air comes in from the, uh, the atmosphere itself. So your vacuum line gets attached to here. That comes directly through here to this reed valve. Oops. 
now it is time to clean all this stuff up and if you look in here you can see there is some crud built up in there so i'm once again very happy that i decided to take this thing apart and uh, check it out i just started cleaning this thing up and i found something that i thought was noteworthy for whatever reason they have this piece built in here and they drill down to uh yeah they drill down so that the oil will actually go in and as I was talking, I just broke off a little piece of aluminum. I'm not sure if the camera will focus on that, but I broke one off with my finger earlier. That's a little piece of aluminum. And there is one, oh, there's another one on the end of the screwdriver. And there's one right in the end. Eventually, these things are going to break off and fall down in there. They might never get picked up. They might just sit in the bottom here, but uh, yeah, definitely not ideal. Aluminum shavings. I've decided that I'm going to shoot footage of me cleaning the pump up as I put it back together. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to clean each piece and put it on knowing that it's clean instead of cleaning it and putting it down, risking getting it dirty and then putting it back on the pump. While I had the camera off, I realized that this part is actually a part from another pump or something. This isn't supposed to be in there. I looked back at the footage and this piece was just sitting in here like this. When I pulled it apart, because there's an opening here, I had assumed that this was a reed valve for the intake but that's not possible based on the way that it goes together. I'm pretty sure what happened is this reed valve out of a bigger pump ended up getting mixed in with these parts and somehow it ended up in here. Uh, I don't know how they wouldn't notice it when they're putting it together. If anyone knows what this is, be sure to let me know, but it definitely isn't supposed to go where it was unless it's a shim, but again, I highly doubt that. And there are some uneven wear marks on these surfaces which indicate that it was bolted down crooked. I would rather my pump not start life with wear marks on it from somebody dropping a random piece in there when they assembled it, but hey, that's uh, part of life. Cleaned out inside of the o-ring grooves. I'm not going to use any sort of assembly lube. Uh, for two reasons. One, I don't want to use my regular assembly goo because if I do that, it's going to contaminate the oil. And it actually is important to use vacuum pump oil in vacuum pumps. And part of the reason is because it has to uh, have a low, or what is it? Yeah, low vapor pressure point. So Ordinary oil can actually vent off gases or get out gas and under a vacuum it's way more likely to do that so Potentially you could have a perfectly working vacuum pump and just by putting the wrong oil in there it wouldn't pull a vacuum because the uh, oil itself would produce so much gas that instead of the uh, pump pulling away the vacuum it would just be moving the vapor pressure or the vapor from the oil itself rant over step two i guess i was gonna say step one but step one would be putting the o-rings back in place step two bolt this bad boy on all right now, you don't want to go incredibly crazy tightening these up, but you want to make sure that they're fairly snug. Because you don't want them working loose on you. I can do one of two things. I can either install the body of this or the rotor, and I think... I'm actually going to choose to do the rotor first because I think putting the body on over the rotor is easier than the other way around. This is all cleaned off and ready to go in. There's no rust on it. There's no schmoo on it. So I'll carefully put it in through the seal 
and find where it engages with the motor give it a little wiggle and seat it into place and that is that now I'm going to take these veins and gently wipe them off with a piece of paper towel now that I've wiped them off with a piece of paper towel I'm going to blow them off with compressed air I'm going to get the little springs I've already cleaned the springs twice so these just fit together like this and it just slides through there's no right or wrong way as long as the holes are opposing each other that goes in there like that pretty straightforward and now the body itself goes on over so I gotta clean this off now, there is a right and wrong way to put these together but it would be almost impossible or impossible to put it together the wrong way so this is the right way here it goes on like this slides in like that now if you try to do it the wrong way what's going to happen is there's not going to be any place countersunk for the bolts to go in and also there's not this countersink here to go in that bolt to or for clearance for that bolt so you're not actually going to be able to bolt this thing on the wrong way so if you're nervous about that don't be so we'll slide this on there the right way and then use these bolts one bolt in here one bolt in here i should have probably grabbed my allen key before i started so i can get them lined up with that hole there there we go it's interesting that these don't get indexed together in some way Like there's no, that's a lot of variability. Once again, tighten this down. You don't want to go stupid tight, but you want to make sure that it is tight because it does have to seal in between these surfaces. There's no gasket or anything. They just depend on a nice clean machined surface. I've got that piece bolted on and now it is time for the, I don't know what you'd call the cap. This is the piece that goes in between the uh, primary and secondary pump. So yeah, once again, it's almost impossible to put this on the wrong way. The countersunk sunk holes are on this side and if you try to put it on the other way, yeah you just you won't be able to you won't be able to continue for the next step at the very least but the bolts just aren't long enough to go all the way through these holes into the other piece That is now tightened down and the next step is going to be to clean up the rotor and install it and then install the small vanes for the small rotor. I've cleaned off the rotor so now I can install it in here. Make sure that it is engaged with the other rotor. Now I can clean off the vanes. These springs get installed in the same way that they do in the primary vanes, just like that. and then this slides through just like so now i have to find another one of these bolts because there was one bolt missing out of my pump so i'm going to go do that now Fortunately, these are six millimeter by one thread pitch. So I have some stainless ones for my jet ski. 
I'm just realizing now that I didn't explain to you guys the oil uh, path and so I'll kind of run over that now but the oil gets sucked in through this little bottom port or little hole here. The little vein for the oil pump pumps it up into this cavity here which is plugged off by a screw and then it comes out two holes here. It comes out one here and one here. The upper one makes the oil go through this passage to the next one and some gets injected in in a few places on the second rotor and vein setup. And uh, yeah, some goes in around the first vein and some goes in around the second vein to make sure that the whole pump stays well lubricated. This piece is now clean and ready to go back on. So I'm gonna slide it on again pretty much impossible to put this together wrong it's very self-explanatory and if you try to do it wrong well it's just not gonna fit together put this stainless steel cap head bolt in here because there was one missing so there are two seals in this pump well two rubber seals in this pump one here and one at the back side where it connects to the motor you want to Put these together gently so you don't damage the lips of the seals. We got our long bolts. I'm going to clean these off then we'll put them in. It's interesting that these don't get indexed together in some way. <laughs> Definitely an alignment issue. Okay, so I have discovered that when you put your pump together, you want to make sure that you keep the rear bolt holes lined up all the time. So through the whole assembly process, there's going to be one, two, three. There's going to be these holes that go all the way through so that you can bolt the outer cover on. And uh, yeah, if you don't take care, then when you get to the outer stage, there's enough misalignment so that you can't actually bolt the outside cover on. So screws that I was talking about, they go through here, here, and here. And so you need to eye this up and make sure actually what probably wouldn't be a bad idea is actually to thread these in just a couple of threads and that way you know when you tighten this up they are lined up learn from my mistakes what would be great is if either they use dowel pins or if they use studs and then you slid everything together on the studs instead of these bolts. And now for the outer cover that we know will bolt on because we've just taken the bolts out. Slide that into place. Put these bolts in. And presto. All right, that is all tightened together. Now, I am going to very carefully get a clean new rag and wipe off the top where the reed valves go on. And then I'm going to get my air and I'm going to blow that area out. You need to be very careful not to damage these surfaces because there is no o-ring or rubber seal or anything like that. The only thing that is sealing this is the fact that there's a bit of oil on it, but this is just a metal reed that goes against a metal surface. So if you mess up the surface, it's not going to seal very well. I guess you would call these reed limiters, so they stop the metal from bending too far and either staying bent or bending too far and breaking. 
Now there is no alignment marks or alignment pins or anything for these valves, so you're going to have to do it by eye. So you're going to need to make sure that they're, they're aligned properly. All right, to make sure that they stay aligned, I'm just going to hold that with a razor blade. As you tighten this up, it's probably going to try to rotate. Don't overdo it and break these screws off. These are fairly tiny screws. I'm not sure what they would be on your pump, but on my pump, they're very small and they would be pretty easy to break. All right. So this plate that went on the end of the pump was actually very, very dirty. I wiped it off and this is the dirt that came off from the first wipe. And then I continued wiping it and it continued just, yeah, more and more and more dirt kept coming off of it. And that's really bad because this is the pump cover. So <laughs> this is where oil gets pumped through the whole pump. So this little thing here, this little vein goes into the pump. And as far as I can tell, there's no right or wrong way. It just goes in there like that. This thing doesn't need to seal very well. It doesn't, it's not like a pressurized system. It just kind of encourages the oil to flow around a little bit. So uh, yeah, it's not terribly critical that it's sealed. Put these screws back in. We're almost done. All right, I gotta dump this oil out and clean this housing completely out, and then I'll come back. This is what my rag looks like after I've wiped out the inside of this case. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a little metal baffle that goes in here, and what it does is stops the oil from coming directly out through the outlet filter. And so yeah, you want to make sure that is in place and also clean it off because everything in here has got disgusting schmoo on it. So why wouldn't that? That was a brand new piece of paper towel and I just wiped out underneath where the vent was. All right. I'm going to very carefully sit this up on end as to not damage the fan housing. All right, so as you guys can see, I have this thing back apart and not because anything is broken or wrong or damaged. But I decided that I was actually going to pour a little bit of oil in the inlet port so that it works its way all the way through the pump before the pump ever turns over under power. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up this fresh bottle of oil and I'm going to pour oil right in here and uh, basically turn the shaft over with a pair of pliers and make sure that the oil gets worked through so that this thing never runs dry. Oh, there we go. I got some spitting out. <laughs> All right, so I know it's in there now. There we go. I can see it coming out through the reed valves in the primary and secondary. So what I'm going to do is very carefully clean this thing up now and put it back in and then uh, fire it up after putting oil in it, of course. They give you this nice fill plug to add the oil, but a whole lot easier way to do it and a nice big hole is simply through the exhaust outlet. So without the filter on, before I put the filter on, what I'm going to do is actually just pour the oil directly in through here and show you guys that 
This is a perfect way of doing this. Way easier than pouring it in through that tiny, tiny little red cap. There we go, we can see the level start rising. They give you just enough. I want the initial load on the pump to be as low as possible, so I'm actually going to remove both caps and let this thing run with as little load as possible on it. I've now cleaned out the exhaust air filter and I'm ready to turn this thing on. I ended up cleaning it out with soap and water and blowing it out with compressed air. Let's turn this thing on and see what it sounds like. Alright YouTube, I'm going to be honest, I just had a little bit of a panic. As you guys can see, it is now dark outside and uh, I've been scratching my head for a little while and then I realized that I was overlooking something pretty straightforward, uh, but the gauge actually threw me off a little bit. So I'll tell you guys a little bit of a story. So. I purchased this at the same time that I purchased my first pump and I got to test the vacuum chamber but the gauge was not set properly so the gauge came from somewhere I think that was around sea level and I'm in Calgary Alberta which is about 30 what is it 3400 feet above sea level so the atmospheric pressure here is considerably lower than it is at sea level. And so I don't know exactly what this thing on the top is, if it's there for doing some sort of calibration or what the idea is. But when I got the gauge, it was reading off and I was just like cheap Chinese gauge. It's not reading properly, whatever. But when I pulled the vacuum on it for the first time with my pump, it actually pulled what said was a perfect vacuum. It pull, pulled all the way down to the 30. And uh, yeah, I thought that was really good. So uh, after a while, the pump got worse and worse and it wouldn't pull the gauge down. And then after I sent that pump back, I started looking at the gauge and I noticed that it had this little thing on the top and that it wasn't reading zero and so I said maybe there's an adjustment screw in here and I started prying up on the cap this little rubber cap thing I still haven't taken it off so I don't know what's under there but when I pulled up on this I heard a little hiss and the needle went to zero so I'm thinking what happens is the atmospheric pressure on the outside of the gauge is actually what determines the zero and anyway basically what happened is as you guys can see right now it is sitting just below 25 inches of mercury i'm not exactly sure how to read this gauge because i haven't taken the time to figure it out but just a little bit below 25 inches of mercury is where it is sitting or above, I guess, depending on how you read the gauge. Um, and so I thought that it should be pulling more like 30. I did a whole lot of head scratching, did a little bit of research and thought about it. And it turns out that at the height that I'm at, at the atmospheric pressure where I am, the best vacuum that I can actually pull is going to be right around where it is. That's a long-winded way of saying that there's actually nothing wrong with the pump. The pump is working. It was able to pull this much vacuum. And because of the atmospheric pressure where I am, which is 89.4 pascals, or kilopascals rather, uh, this is the best vacuum that I can expect in this area. So. No matter how much uh, 
air I remove from this chamber, the atmospheric pressure can only push down on it with the available weight of the atmosphere. And at this elevation, that is all it is. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments section, but uh, I think that's what's going on here. I'm going to try to see if I can find a, what do you call that, topographical, topographical map that shows elevation changes in the city because I'm actually at a fairly high point in the city and I think downtown is quite a bit lower than where I am, which is probably where they measure the altitude, so... There's a couple of things that I wasn't terribly clear about in this video, so I wanted to point them out now to avoid any confusion. When I was taking the pump apart, there was a little piece of metal that looks like a reed valve, some sort of reed one-way check valve, that was trapped in between the rearmost pump body and the motor body, we'll call it. So it wasn't actually covering any holes or doing anything, it was just trapped in between the two pieces, and uh, the pump is functioning perfectly fine. And if that piece was actually where I thought it was in the first place, this pump just wouldn't work at all. So it definitely doesn't go there. The pump is working 100% perfectly. I've run it for a while now. I've pulled down a vacuum as I will show you guys shortly. And uh, yeah, that piece just wasn't supposed to be in there. Also, there was one bolt missing out of the center housing and I replaced that bolt with a bolt that I had. And then the last thing that I wanted to clarify was that when I was putting the pump bodies together, I mentioned that it was funny that they didn't have any indexing. And what I meant by that is there was no dowel pins to hold everything aligned. And because the holes are so big where the bolts go through, you can actually move the pump body around quite a bit. So all of the pieces have a little bit of play in them. And if you're lucky, when you get all of that stuff stacked together, you could still get the bolts all the way through. But what happened to me is I must have kept dropping them down. As I put the first one on, it was down a little bit. I put the second one on, it was down a little bit further. By the time I get out to the outside to put the final outside cover on, uh, I was misaligned enough that I actually couldn't get the long bolts to go all the way through into the inner threaded holes. So what I ended up doing is I took it all back apart and what I did was for each stage, I would actually put the piece on and use the long bolts that go from the outside in. And I would put them in just finger tight, just a couple of threads in. And then I would install the bolts that actually held the part in place, tighten them up, and then remove the three bolts that hold the outer cover on. I would then install the next piece with the three long bolts that hold the outside cover on just finger tight once again, and then I would install the bolts that actually hold that piece on, tighten it up, and I just continued doing that, and that way I was sure that the outer bolts were actually acting as alignment pins to hold everything together so that when I was finally done, the bolts would have no trouble going all the way through. So I would recommend that you do that because if you don't, you might end up doing it twice like I did. I guess actually the last thing that I should say is that uh, you can actually take this pump off. When you saw me adding oil to the pump, there are three bolts that hold it to the motor housing. 
So you have the pump housing flange, we'll call it, or the rearmost pump plate. I don't know what it's called, but it bolts with three bolts to the motor housing or the motor plate. And uh, so you can take the whole pump off as one assembly. You don't need to take it apart piece by piece, but it's kind of like what I said at the start of the video when you're removing the oil pump cover, it's a lot easier to do that when it's bolted to something that's heavy and isn't going to be moving around. So if you took those three bolts out first and then tried to take the pump apart, you're gonna have to hold on to it or put it in a vise or something so that you can actually loosen those bolts or you know get the pump apart. So I would recommend leaving those bolts until the very end, taking that piece off, cleaning it out, and then basically putting it back together and using the three long bolts as alignment pins. Once you get it all back together, it would be a good idea to take it apart and put a little bit of oil in it like I did. And the reason why I wouldn't recommend putting oil in as you assemble it is because there's a pretty high chance uh, when you've got oil and stuff, unless you're working in a very, very, very clean environment, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna get dust or debris or something from, yeah. There's always dust or something floating, floating in the air and if you've got really oily parts, then it's way more likely that stuff is gonna stick to it. So I think you're better off to completely assemble the pump and then once you have everything assembled, pull those three bolts off from the back side, pour a little bit of oil in, and then right away install it, put the cover on, and then you avoid the chance of a bunch of debris getting in there while you're working on it. So now that I've said all that, let's uh, test this pump out. I will show you guys that it does in fact work. It's uh, very quiet. It pulls a vacuum down quite quickly. And as I showed you guys in that chart, it is pulling down a little bit below 25 inches. I call it below because it's vacuum is low. It's like less pressure, but the gauge reads less pressure as a higher number when you read in inches of mercury. So uh, it's actually reading like almost 26 inches of mercury, but I'm calling it below 25 because it, yeah. Anyway, I, I'm not making sense with the my words, but <laughs> it's pulling like 25 and three quarters or 25 and a half inches of mercury. So I will show you guys that right now. Right. So before we jump right into it, I will do a little bit more talking and tell you guys that I have run this thing through a break-in period. I did a bunch of research on the internet and I'm gonna kind of give you guys some advice based on things that I read and I don't know if this is the truth, but it seems to make sense based on the way the pump is designed and my understanding of mechanics and whatnot. So I'll tell you guys and you can do as you please with the information. So uh, one thing is that I ran the pump with nothing connected to it for 15 minutes straight and uh, allowed it to heat up and then shut it off without anything connected to it and let it cool completely off. I checked the oil and made sure that the oil was still nice and clear, that there wasn't a bunch of junk floating around in there. And uh, one of the things that I read that kind of makes sense to me, and you can probably get away with this 99.9% .9 of the time, but I think it's probably a little bit easier on the pump if you do it this way. So when you're pulling a vacuum, uh, it's creating a lot of pressure and a lot of heat inside of the pump. And I read somewhere, somebody who worked on uh, vacuum pumps, on higher end pumps, said that you're actually not supposed to shut the pump off with a load on it. So what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to have the pump running. So I don't actually have a separate valve. So instead of bleeding the pressure off of my chamber, um, what I do is I'll be running the pump and then I'll close the chamber off. You can see the chamber is actually closed off now and it has a vacuum pulled in it. So it's about 25 and three quarters inches of mercury pulled on it right now. So imagine the pump is still running. What I do is I allow it to continue running and then I open this, I close this valve so that the vacuum stays in here. And then I remove this cover so that it's freely moving air. So now the air is freely pulling through it. The pump isn't actually loaded up. The pump isn't doing much work. It's just spinning around. 
and then I shut the pump off with this open. And I think that makes more sense because if it stops with a lot of load on it and a lot of heat built up inside of the pump, it's more likely to damage a piece or warp a piece due to heat in the pump. That's the way I understand it anyway, and that's what I read. So, uh, the other thing is that I ran this actually three separate times. So I ran this for 45 minutes on and off. So uh, 15, three intervals of 15 minutes before I actually used it to pull a vacuum. And uh, I read that that was also recommended. You want to at least do it twice. And it's also recommended that after the first 15 minute run, you actually drain the oil out and change it. Uh, I think that would be extremely, extremely advisable if you weren't taking the pump apart and cleaning it. I can see that my oil is still completely, completely clear. And that is likely because I did an extremely thorough job of cleaning out the inside of the pump. So after running it for the break-in period, it really hasn't shaken anything loose or causing, ca hasn't caused any... Uh, you know, junk to get uh, mixed in with the oil. So I haven't had to change it, but uh, that is advisable, especially if you didn't do a good job cleaning it, run it for 15 minutes without any load on it, change the oil and then uh, put fresh oil in it, run it for another 15 minutes. And basically you don't wanna be loading your pump up or working the pump until you're sure that it has good clean oil and has gone through its break-in cycle. Okay, now after all that talking, I'm going to drain the air out of the chamber. So I'll show you guys here. Now after all that talking, I'm going to drain the air out of the chamber and show you guys my pump pulling a vacuum. So we'll open this up. Actually, we'll keep this closed and we'll close this. We'll put this lid on. It is fairly quiet, but I don't know. I might have to scream over the sound of it for you guys to hear. Actually pretty quiet. Okay, so it's pulling a vacuum through here and now I'll open this valve and you'll see the gauge start to go up. So it's pulling the vacuum. The higher the vacuum gets, the slower it will go. So when it gets up to here, it'll slow down considerably. So I'll probably speed this up. <laughs> All right, that's just about as far as it goes. It might get a little bit further than that, but I'm not gonna wait around all day for it because I'm not actually using the vacuum for anything. So what I was talking about earlier is what I'm going to do now instead of just shutting the pump off I'm going to close this valve so that is now closed the chamber is not working against the pump I'm going to open this up <clears throat> As long as I can remember to do it that way, I think I will do it that way just to uh, make it as easy on the pump as possible. Now I've got this piece of tape on here so that I could check the temperature with my heat gun. And I ended up uh, kind of freaking out because the pump was getting quite hot and I looked around on the internet and I ended up finding out that I actually have nothing to worry about. So. With a single stage pump, you can expect the temperature probably to get around 140-ish Fahrenheit, 130 Fahrenheit. Um, with these pumps, with a two-stage pump, especially in the higher horsepower range, the pump itself could actually get up over 160 Fahrenheit. I forget what the actual range is, but it's quite a bit higher than that. I don't think I've actually said it in this video yet, so I guess I will say this before we close it out. This is a 2RS-3 pump, which I've now got from two different sellers. I'm assuming that these same pumps are probably sold by hundreds of different vendors. 
and uh, some of them have different colors and they look a little bit different but uh, yeah I'm assuming that a lot of these come from the same ma manufacturer uh, this is a model 2RS-3 they rate it at 9 CFM uh, it's important to note that the uh, rated air displacement is at free air with no load against it so as soon as you hook this thing up to a vacuum chamber or any kind of load it's not yeah as soon as it pulls a little bit of a vacuum it's not doing this 9 CFM anymore that's when you have like an empty vacuum bag this is nice it's uh, rated at one horsepower and that makes me a lot more comfortable about running it for a long long time um, I know that some people do have half horsepower or even third horsepower quarter horsepower units and they run them for a long time doing all sorts of different things but uh, knowing that this is rated at one horsepower um, I'm fairly confident that I could run this almost indefinitely and it wouldn't uh, overheat the motor or cause any issues there. And uh, something that nobody really cares about, but 370 milliliters of oil is what they say that this thing holds. My vacuum chamber, uh, which is a one gallon, got pulled down in that much time. So I don't know if that is good or bad because this is the only vacuum pump I've ever had. Uh, the line that I have hooked up to it, this is just a cheap air compressor hose, so a coiled air compressor hose, and I actually removed the swivel ends off of it and used, uh, I just pushed them onto some barb fittings because the swivel ends on the end of the hose were leaking quite badly, so I decided not to use that. Well, that just about does it for this one. This is probably going to be the longest video that I've ever published on my channel. The reason why I ended up making this video is because when I was looking to purchase a vacuum pump myself, I had questions and it was really hard to find the answers to them. And uh, then when I had broken vacuum pumps and I wanted to know what was going on, it was really hard to find information about that. And so I decided that I would uh, make my own video with uh, some of the answers and information that I found. I hope this helped somebody out and uh, helped you make a decision maybe on purchasing a pump or helped you repair your pump. If it did, please let me know in the comments. I always enjoy people commenting on my videos. One of my most viewed videos was actually a random video that I posted about my girlfriend's video camera and how to format uh, the memory card on it. And it's got the most views, I think, of any video on my channel. And a couple of times a week, I'll have somebody comment on that video and thank me for how much I've helped them out. So uh, I hope that this video turns into that, not necessarily with the views, but I, uh, I like when I can help people out. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.